Hey, what's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing, and today I'm going to bring you a little bit of a review slash demonstration of this Thrill Seeker VBL from Bootsy. Uh, I just released this not too long ago, and uh, you know, I just thought I'd share it with all my subscribers and everybody. It's uh, absolutely free to download. Uh, there's a link in the, descri uh, the description, so uh, click that, and uh, you'll find the link for that. And uh, and yeah, and also there's an article as well that I put together, and uh, it'll give you a little bit more. Uh, interaction as far as the before and afters I'm gonna post those so it'll be some little audio samples that you can go check out uh, so instead of you know watching the video and kind of seeing what I do you can go and you know play with that all on your own so go there to the article check that out and this plugin is based off of uh, old variable mu limiters from the 1950s uh, and he's added uh, all that character to it as well with the distortion and uh, all the artifacts and everything that the the transformers will add uh, the only difference is, um, from my understanding, is that the compression and the amplification or the distortion, I guess you could say, are independent, meaning that you can control them independently, but they work together. So the compression and the, the distortion work as one, but it just allows you to control the amount that you want from each of them. So you got the input gain over here, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Then you got this stereo slash dual mono. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, I'll just give you a short little, uh, you know, description, I guess. The stereo, if it's engaged on stereo, the left and right channel are being treated equally based on the input. And then dual mono means that the left and right channel are being treated independently based on the amount of input uh, that's coming into the left or the right channel. Then you got this TRAFO here, the TRAFO. It's the transformer, so you can gauge this. It gives you a little bit more color. A little bit more weight um, it adds some phasing properties to that so if you're gonna set up this plugin in uh, you know parallel uh, and you have this engaged just make sure that uh, there's no phasing going on but uh, if there is you know you can still use this dry and wet signal so if you have this on say for instance the drum bus you know you don't necessarily have to set up another drum bus to get the parallel uh, compression or distortion from this plugin you can use just use this dry wet uh, knob here then you got the compression knob again that's pretty self-explanatory just you know boost it up and you get more compression and you'll see the gain reduction over here um, the amp as you turn this up this is also um, doing a little bit of compression to the sound it's it's reducing the gain so the more uh, distortion that you add the more that it's reducing the gain off the peaks um, this brilliance knob here in the amp section uh, as you increase more distortion or you know that analog color whatever you want to call it uh, it's it tends to take away some of that high end so this brilliance here is just like a high shelf filter so you know you can turn it the more you turn it clockwise the more high end you'll get all right so with this emphasis knob this basically works like a high pass filter uh, so what happens when you use a, a plug-in like this with the compression and the distortion uh, you tend to lose a lot of those bass frequencies so by turning this emphasis knob a little bit to the right, you allow those original bass frequencies to come through unaffected. So you can add all the compression and all the distortion you want, but you'll re you'll retain all that bottom end. So this works great in trying to tighten up uh, like a bass sound because uh, you can tighten up those those frequencies from say 100 to you know all the way up to the top of the frequency spectrum, but leave 100 hertz and below untouched. So you can get all that bottom end that you want, but still get that distortion to the rest of the bass sound. So with this bias knob here, the more you turn it clockwise to the right. Uh, the more that the high frequencies get pronounced and then the sound appears to be slightly tighter overall um, the best way to kind of hear this is to sort of play around with it and see what it does you might have to you know use some extreme settings on the amp and you know on the compression or whatever and, and just see what it's doing but apparently this doesn't affect the compression directly so over here we got the output that's again that's self-explanatory just like the input and then the dry wet knob uh, this just determines you know if you want more of the original sound then you turn a clock or counterclockwise if you want the fully compressed and distorted sound you would turn it all the way to the right and then in between you can get a little bit of both of the signal you can get a little bit of the dry signal a little bit of the wet signal or the distorted and compressed signal and then you can sort of just use that dial to fade in the amount that you want from each from each uh, you know setting dry or wet so I'll kind of show you here, uh, we've got this bass line, it's in solo here, I'll bring up the settings for this. Um, so what I did was, 
Bootsy has a bunch of different, uh, you know, um, I guess settings or presets that he created. And I just kind of quickly went through all of them just to see what's going on with each one. And he had this one with the Bootsy's Choice, and I guess that's his favorite uh, setting or the one that he likes the best that he created. And uh, what I did was I, I took that, but I sort of tweaked it from there. Like he was a little bit more conservative with this amp when I just kind of cranked it. Um, the brilliance, I think I left it the same. Um, compression, I left the same. The bias, uh, yeah, the only thing I, I actually did was the emphasis. I turned this up so that I could let some of that bass come through so it wasn't completely distorting and pressing that bass sound. And uh, everything else, I think I left the same. I also think I turned on this transformer. And that's about it. So I'll turn this off and you'll see what the bass sounds like and I'll turn it on. So it adds that nice little mid-range color to it so that you can, you know, pick it up in the mix. But it also is tightening it up. Like there's something that it's doing that makes it, you know, I can't explain it. But once it's in the context of the mix, it, it just really, really makes it tight and fits better with the rest of the sound. So um, this is just the instrumental, but I'll play everything and then I'll unbypass the bass and then I'll I'll bypass and unbypass it and you'll see what I'm talking about. So just focus on the bass and then see what that's doing in context of the mix. It's almost like it gets out of the way of everything else in the mix so it's not quite as muddy in a sense or it's not quite as you know boomy or rumbly and it just tightens it up but it still has all that low end that it had originally so that's what's great about this emphasis and honestly I was a big fan of the Ferric TDS and I still am I still love the way that plugin sounds but I gotta be honest with you as far as like bass and all that stuff is concerned I would probably you know start reaching for this plugin a little bit more because i just i don't know it's just something that it does to the bass that i love it's a really really good sounding plugin and again same thing with the kick like this cake or this kick had this you know tubby sort of sound to it you couldn't really um find it well you can hear it but it it just is buried a little bit in the mix so you need to do a little bit of shaping to this kick and there's other tools that you can use like transient designers and other distortion plugins or even parallel compression to get this thing to pop out but uh, in this case i just threw this plugin on i started playing with these settings um, and i just sort of came to a conclusion of what i thought sounded better so in this case i didn't turn the transformer on uh, there's a lot less compression in this case and then the amp is, you know, about halfway, a little bit more than halfway. Uh, the brilliance is the high EQ. It's almost all the way. It's about three quarters. The emphasis, again, the exact same thing with the bass. I wanted that low bottom to come through. So I turned this uh, knob up uh, just to let that bottom to kind of poke through. And then the bias, I turned this all the way up, all the way to the right. So that, uh, you know, I guess it just, it does something to the mid range. And, and like uh, the manual says, it, it does something that sort of tighten up the sound and, and it, you can definitely hear it and it, it sounds really good so and in this case the wet knob is all the way so uh, there's no you know it's basically throughout the whole entire sound so let's check it out before and after let's turn it on and let's solo the kick so you can hear what's going on So if you really look at the the meter down here on the kick, it's actually like because I tried to get the level as match as I possibly could. So there's not an increase in the gain, but it just sounds thicker, fatter. It's got more bottom end to it now as well. And the meter's not doing anything. It's staying the exact same place. And the good thing about this plugin is it's like 
it sounds natural still. So it doesn't sound like I'm doing anything to the sound where it's like, wow, that really sounds unnatural. You can really hear what's going on. Um, you know, it's it's just like it's it's increasing all the pleasing sounds in the kick and it still sounds like the kick itself. It's it's really weird and hard to describe what's going on with this plugin, but I'm telling you, I really am starting to like this plugin. So let's do that again. I'll do that in solo and then I'll do it in the context of the mix and you can see what's going on. Okay, so the next sound that uh, I added this onto was the piano, and, uh, and yeah, just to give you sort of a before and after. So with this piano, though, it uh, it didn't quite sound as good when when I had the the dry wet all the way. So what I did was I, I kind of emphasized all the settings that I wanted on this plugin, and then I kind of hammered it really hard as far as the compression and and the distortion. And then what I did was I used the dry wet here to uh, increase or decrease the amount of the affected signal that I wanted to be blended in with the original. So the thing was with this compression and this amplification, when it was hitting the piano, you know, really, really hard, there was something that it was doing to it musically and the way that it was bouncing and, and playing off of that compressor. And it was also extending the life of the piano note. So it was it was elongating them. It was making them play a lot longer. So when the chorus comes in or even the, the pre-chorus, it gives it that extra sense of, you know, hey, the piano is not going away so quickly. It's, it's you know, it, it's playing better in time with the music. But the problem was when you're when it was too much, like when there was too much compression or too much amplification, I had this wet knob all the way. It was just overbearing. It was just slammed too hard. You could hear all the dynamics being crushed. So the better idea was to kind of blend them in, almost like a parallel compression. So I have the, the transformer on this time. I have it in dual mono, so the left and right are being affected differently. Compression's about halfway. Uh, the amplification's 100%. Uh, I got this brilliance knob all the way to the right. The bias is all the way to the right and the emphasis is just being left alone. So I'm not even touching anything on that. So that way the entire uh, frequency spectrum of that sound can be affected. Um, and then this dry wet here, um, it's probably anywhere from 10 to 15% uh, to the dry side. So let's see what that sounds like before and after and let's check it out. Having the sound original just it was a little bit too clean so um but what i'll do is i'll show you the extremes of this plugin so you can really do some crazy stuff with this plugin so i'll turn this all the way up and then i'll show you what's going on with this thing i'll turn everything off first and let's see
so yeah so that's pretty much it uh very interesting sounding plugin it's, it's very pleasing uh there's not a lot of harshness to this plugin from what i can hear so i really like it uh the things that i would probably use it most on are bass uh probably kicks depending on how flappy they sound like in this case it made the kick sound better um, maybe drum buses and stuff like that and also things that you want to dirty up like in this case the pianos maybe synths um, you could probably sound good on electric guitars haven't tried that yet um, I wasn't too thrilled about the way it sounded on vocals or even on a master bus situation but uh, you know never say never I'm, I'm not too familiar with this plugin just yet I'm still experimenting with it and playing with it and, and seeing what uh, it has to offer so that's my two cents on it. I think it's an amazing plugin and you can't beat free. I mean, seriously, I, I think this thing sounds a lot better than some plugins that you'll pay like, you know, 50, 60, even a hundred dollars for. So uh, go check it out if you haven't already. And uh, like I said, the link's in the description. So that's pretty much it until next time. These four walls feel like a prison. I'm in hell every second.